moves on. Hey, Champion T, you came back. Thanks for coming back on. Man, I got like these flyways. Yeah, I got a hair bow in my head. Pastor McDonald, grace and peace to you. Thank you for coming back on. These flyways on my head are something sick today. I need to get my hair washed. Champion T, I think this is my first time actually seeing you on. So thanks for getting on here today. And you came back for two with me. This was going to be super duper duper de duper duper short. Thank you. I appreciate it. If you all haven't been to the smokingprofit.com, please go to my website and subscribe. Um, you can subscribe to either receive email alerts or text alerts, whichever ones you prefer. The emails, of course, will be a little bit more detailed. Texts are going to be super short and sweet, and I will not flood you or spam you because I don't like that. I like my space, so I will definitely give you your space and not be shoving stuff down you all the time. So I just want to talk about failure really quickly and how, um, you know, we're scared of failure and we see failure as a bad thing, but failure is actually, uh, um, it can actually be a beneficial thing. It can help you with getting where you're going and like, thank you Champion T for putting that up there. It can help you um, to do something really great, which is build confidence. So um, failure actually helps to build confidence. It sounds so stupid, but it's true. Oh, it's gonna rain today? Okay, well we need rain, that's pretty dope. All right, so for those of you that are beginning something new, looking for something better in life, or like me building something that God's designed, don't be overwhelmed with the possibility of failure. Failure is a necessary component of success. Um, sounds strange, right? Not really. Think about it. Challenges and the prospect of failure help you to engage your ability to reason, to solve problems, and to overcome. If you never face adversity and overlook opportunities because they may be hard or you may fail, you develop a false sense of confidence. So let me just break this out a little bit and, and pull some things out of here. If, um, you know, if, if you're a high school student and you're doing work um, that's for someone in grade school, someone elementary age, you know, you're going to breeze through that work. That work's going to be easy, right? You know, it's not going to slow you down. It's not going to bog you down. You're going to start building all this confidence. Like, yeah, I can do it. I'm great. I'm awesome. But you're not working at your um, the level that you should be on. You're not working from a place that can help you to um, develop new problem solving skills. You're not working from a place that's going to help you learn to reason in a new way. You're not working from a place that's going to help to build you. You're just doing something that's easy. You know, you haven't moved on to anything new. You haven't progressed. So when challenges come, when difficulties come, when trouble come, what comes, what's going to happen? You know, that confidence that you've built up, right? Comfort zones are like complacency is a killer. Proverbs 1. I just give you a paraphrase of that. But um, yeah, so when, when these things happen to you, you know, that false sense of confidence that you've developed is going to fail and then you're going to hit bottom and you're not going to know what to do. So instead of looking at failure as such a bad thing and allowing failure to hold you back and stop you from trying and stop you from exploring new opportunities or like my man said down there, um, stop you from getting out of your comfort zone. You know, what you need to do is just go ahead and, and dig into it plunge into it. I'm going to give you a few things that can help you plunge into it because um, failure helps to build true confidence. And life without troubles, like I said, it's going to bolster, it's going to strengthen a false confidence. Authentic confidence is going to help you to be successful in life. So um, practice makes perfect. We heard that, right? <laughs> we think it's kind of cheesy. Um, da -da 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 if you're doing work and you do not see any type of results, then you need to stop and evaluate what you're doing. 
Is this something that I should be expending energy on? And is this something that God wants me to be doing? So if that's happening to you and you're truly seeing nothing, no results, then you, you it's time God is saying to you, I want you to evaluate what you're doing. And he may be moving you to something new. Um, sometimes we don't know when the brook has dried up. You know, when it's time for us to go like, okay, resources tapped out there. I'm not going to let you prosper there because I don't want you to be there. I don't want you to be doing that or I don't want you to have your hands in that. You know, there's somewhere else I want you to want you to go, want you to be something else I want you to be doing. So I, I pray that um, this time of reevaluation for you would be revelatory in Jesus name. All right. So practice makes perfect. We heard that from the time that we were like kids. Well, at least I know I did. I heard in elementary school, practice makes perfect. It was like a little cheer we had to do. Practice makes perfect, you see. Okay, so enough of that. But practice does actually make perfect. And you can go to school and you can um, learn, um, you know, a, a trade. You can learn skills in a formal setting. But there's something about developmental experience. And what do I mean when I say that? There's something about the experience that you gain when you actually do something. So if you're scared to fail, right, you're not going to ever try those things that you should be doing that are going to actually help you to gain experience. Oh, I'm talking crazy, right? This is, this is not true. No, there is something to it. There's something advantageous to, to building, innovating, and demonstrating and solidifying your proven skills through experience. And there was a psychologist that actually understood this too. His name is K. Anders Erickson. This is a life principle. You need to take this with you. Deliberate practice leads to expertise. And he even put a number of um, hours on it, 10,000 hours. So if you're saying, hey, like, you could be in a place of where you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing and it's not productive. But you could be in a place where there's actual results. That's why I said to you, if you don't see any results, like, think about it. Really, really evaluate. If there are no results, okay, book, book is dried up. But if you have results, know that, that it takes 10,000 hours of you deliberately practicing something, of you deliberately putting in an effort, of you deliberately being intentional about what you want in order for you to develop expertise. So it's okay for you to fail. It's okay for you to not have a good day. It's okay for maybe, hey, it's, it's been two months and, and I don't see what I think I should be seeing, but there is something there. It's okay because 10,000 hours is what the psychologist said it takes of deliberate practice for you to build expertise. So at the end of the day, this is my encouragement to you. It doesn't matter how smart you are, where you come from, the resources you've been given. Yeah, we do need that stuff. You know what I'm saying? We do need resources. We do need sometimes to go in and get some formal training to help us do what we want to do. Thank you. I appreciate you putting that up, Champion T. But at the end of the day, you need to practice what you want. And failure, the fear of failure, is going to stop you from practicing that. So we just move fear out the way right now. We just move the fear of failure out the way right now. I thank you, Lord, for shifting our perspective, Father, that we won't be scared to fail, Father, but that we'll look at failure as an opportunity for us to use the skills you've given us to resolve problems and to build an authentic confidence. We just move all false confidence out the way, Father, and I just pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to live, reside, breathe in us and give us insight on our now, Father, and on our future, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let me give you this scripture, and I'm going to go. And this is um, Ecclesiastes 9, blah, 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 9 and 11. And this is the easy-to-read version. I also saw other things in life that were not fair. The fastest runner does not always win the race. The strongest soldier does not always win the battle. Wise people don't always get the food. Smart people don't always get the wealth. Educated people don't always get the praise they deserve. When the time comes, bad things can happen to anyone. So at the end of the day, yeah, just because you got this is not going to set you up to be great. You know what I'm saying? Don't be scared of failure. 
failure is going to help you to build authentic confidence. Authentic confidence is going to help you to be successful. All right, so go ahead and go to the blog, smokingprofit.com. Subscribe. Love you guys. Many blessings to you. Feel free to connect with me on um, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. All of my handles are at L-O-L-A-C-A-B-A-Y-A, Lola Kabaya. Appreciate you guys. Bye.